Welcome Climate Viewers, this is Jim Lee, the Climate Viewer Guy from ClimateViewer.com. It's December 3rd, 2018, and we're going to talk about HARP and the thousand plus earthquakes that happened up in Alaska. Did HARP create these earthquakes? Well, let's get to just the facts. So, HARP was turned on for the weekend, uh, 29 through December 3rd. And, you know, they, they announced this in advance, both on Twitter and Facebook. And, of course, you wouldn't, you know, at the minute that the earthquake occurred, they went and, you know, had a little, had to put out a little press release. Um, magnitude 7, initial estimate earthquake, felt at UAF HARP. See updated information from the Alaska Earthquake Center. HARP was not operating at the time and did not cause the earthquake. For additional information, see our fact. Um, the comment's pretty funny, and this one pretty much sums it up. I'm sure conspiracy theories will reference the fact that Harp caused the quake because it was on yesterday. Wait and see how that plays out. And, uh, you know, of course, you get the normal commentary where people are saying just that. Tell that Dart Bell. You know, Jesse Ventura is at the fence yelling, You did it! Uh, you know, but me, I'm pretty much like this. You know what I mean? Let's, all right, let's see how this plays out. So, you know, I looked into it. There you go. Jesse Ventura doesn't believe you. In fact, he's staring at your facility from outside the fence right this second. So, you know, I wanted to look into it and I did. And, you know, they put the same thing out on Facebook. I'll give you guys links to these so you can enjoy the comments because they're pretty funny. Um, but regardless, you know, I want to take this seriously, so let's take a look, see, and see what happened. Chris Fallon, of course, hi folks, you may be curious about the recent earthquake in Alaska. Its main effect on HARP is that most of us have colleagues, family, and friends in Anchorage area who are our primary concern at this time. We are fine, and the, so is the machine, which was off. Stay tuned. Um, so... You go over here to their link that they provided, Elmendorf Air Force Base. You know, yes, that's where the 7.0 magnitude earthquake occurred. And here is the USGS uh, website um, link to that. And it was at 172929 UTC. Uh, so that's on uh, November 30th. And for those who don't know UTC, I got a little converter here for you. I'll blow that up. Um, you can see that that was right about here, so about noon on the East Coast. And, uh, you know, so I did some digging into it to look and see what happened. And um, this is what it looked like. So, oh that's God. 
it's nothing to laugh about for sure. Um, and we can take a look at all of the earthquakes that occurred. And what I have right here is this is the main area where they occurred. This is the 7.0 earthquake right here. So as you can see, this is Anchorage, Alaska uh, right here. And right across the bay, that's where um, the bulk of the earthquakes occurred and more than a thousand aftershocks. So where is HARP in relation to this? It is over here. So that's the HARP facility right there. And that's, you know, approximately, I think it was 138 miles away. Do a quick measurement, go like this over to here and we'll see that that's about 159 miles so and what we see right here this line right here is the magnetic field line where they were going to be doing their air glow experiments which did not occur because uh, they didn't have the right conditions but nonetheless they did transmit um, for a good portion of the day before uh, the major earthquake occurred and I did dig into that as well so let's take a look earliest post I have right here is 11.52 a.m. on November 29th. During high-powered O mode, high frequency, like most of the experiments today, a small bit of the ionosphere is extra reflective to VHF and UHF. So, you know, that means that these, you know, uh, over-the-horizon radars like the ones right here, uh, that's clear. The BMU site two and the Pave Pause up here, uh, they got a little extra bounce out of all that juice. Uh, this is the Poker Flat Rocket Range up here uh, with the AMISR um, and all that sort of stuff. And you can see it right there. There's the Poker Flat ISR. So, you know, they got a little extra reflectivity out of all this. Um, there's a VLF station here, and we have two super darns down here, one in Kodiak and one in King Salmon. Um, but to, to, to say that this was caused by HARP, um, I think is a little premature, if not um, ridiculous. Uh, all the evidence I'm seeing just, you know, this is a common area for earthquakes. I think a lot of people are really overreacting to all of this. And yeah, I could make have a lot of fun at Chris's expense since he's really pissed me off lately. But why do that? Um, no fun. So, and the reason why he's uh, saying this is something called the Luxembourg effect, uh, which you can see here. And uh, that was brought up by one of the individuals who was like, hey, you know, Russia's going to be testing their container uh, radars, uh, which are going to be, you know, operating. So there could be some kind of unknown effects that led to this, but I highly doubt it. Um, I'm not going to make the claim that they are. Let's just put it that way. But there are over the horizon radars, you know, all in the area. And when you're pumping 3.6 million watts into the sky, one never knows. It is an extreme coincidence uh, that, you know, the day they, they start, you know, let's see, this is the 29th also. A lot of ham radio operators tuning in. Nice strong signal in Victoria. Uh, we got some, some other ones uh, here you know creating this cool chevron christmas tree looking pattern you know on the waterfall charts for the ham operators um this guy right here is surprisingly strong signal in charleston south carolina that's you know about two hours from me i'm in sumter south carolina um and we go on and we say very weak signal in south africa this is also the 29th so Harp was really transmitting pretty powerfully the day before for it to be picked up all the way in South Africa and Sao Paulo, Brazil, and uh, even in Qatar. That's a long distance. It was picked up in the Netherlands. Um, even Chris Fallon said, you know, first report I ever recall from the Middle East, you know, in Qatar. So the even though... Harp was broadcasting, you know, from two to maybe five, eight, um, me megahertz, you know, the signal was being picked up on the other side of the planet for sure. 
Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it created the earthquake. So, but it also doesn't mean that it didn't have something to do with it. And I dug pretty hard to try to find um, any kind of ELF, uh, ULF monitoring. Unfortunately, the, the Demeter uh, satellite data wasn't available, so I wasn't able to find that. I did see this here. Uh, this guy is picking up some pretty strong pulses in California from around 650 to 850 hertz, uh, which is pretty low frequency to say the least. Um, but you know, once again, this does have real world, uh, implications for a lot of people. Um, luckily there were no reports of any deaths or anything like that. Uh, lots of liquefaction, lots of destruction of property. Um, but luckily didn't seem like anybody was hurt. So the reason this is important, um, and it's always attributed to HARP, is because of, you know, papers like this, atmosphere above Japan heated rapidly before magnitude 9 earthquake. And you can see right here, this is from the Demeter satellite. And of course, I tried to look the Demeter data up. Like I said, their website cannot be reached at this time. So I won't be able to give you guys any information directly from that. Maybe the satellite's been shut off. Who knows? It's been a while. Um, but the Demeter satellite was what detected the heating of the ionosphere above uh, the Fukushima Daiichi 9.0. And, you know, this kind of information is sparse. It's pretty hard to find. Um, I asked... Uh, you know, Chris Fallen directly about it. And of course he just provided me with some, you know, waterfall, waterfall charts for VLF and they're not very effective at, you know, <laughs> giving me the kind of information I'm looking for. So the bottom line is without actual magnetometers in the area, we probably will never know even if there were extremely low frequency or ultra low frequency waves created in that area. So I'm going to leave it at that. I did check out the ionospheric conditions for total electron content during the earthquake and everything looked pretty darn normal. Um, no big bright red spots, no real increased, um, you know, heating in the area. You know, it would take some pretty powerful, extremely low frequency or ultra low frequency waves to create an earthquake of that size. And on top of that, this area commonly receives earthquakes. Um, it's not uncommon. What is uncommon is a 7.0 and a thousand aftershocks. And it is highly coincidental that they occurred one day after Harp started its campaign. You know, regardless, I don't, I don't approve of um, ionospheric modification techniques. I think we all know that. And uh, I'm also not going to bullshit you with a whole bunch of stories saying they did it and there's proof. There is no proof. And, you know, furthermore, this area is common for uh, earthquakes, just not that large. We're just going to play it down the middle and say, um, you know, Hart probably had nothing to do with this. And, you know, they're just playing with their toy microwave in the sky and seeing how far they can send their signal and it made it all the way to south africa and qatar so chris and the boys glad you guys are safe and uh you know university of alaska still don't like your you know <laughs> microwave of doom but i'm not going to blame you for an earthquake so with that being said uh you guys i appreciate you watching this quick video um you can always continue to support my work on climate viewer at patreon.com slash climate viewer or one-time donation at paypal or gofundme that'd be greatly appreciated and you know i will continue to uh, cover this sort of stuff you know you can check all of this stuff out that i'm showing you right now on the screen on climateviewer.org and uh you know let's uh hope that they they don't find anybody hurt uh you know post this video but regardless, that's a hell of a lot of earthquakes. And you can monitor all of this in real time uh, on climateviewer.org. This is the Climate Viewer 3D version. Um, my preference, my toy, my joy. 
I'm going to get back to mapping and I uh, hope that you guys will keep uh, giving Chris hell because he deserves it, <laughs> regardless of whether Harp created an earthquake or not. Um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So, guys, with information comes power and with power comes great responsibility. So, remember while you're, you know, making your video saying Hart made a bunch of earthquakes out there. Uh, attack ideas, not people. <laughs>